So this thing with religion and the different icons like Jesus or Jehovah or all these icons, Muhammad, um, deities of the past, when you trace it all the way back to the seven tribes of the Anunnaki, those were your creators, but they created all mankind. And those creators had their children, okay? They took parts of their own DNA, gave it to mankind that were the Neanderthals, the cavemen, the primates, and whatever. And then religions were formed from that. And so it's interesting. I was reading something, just skimming over um, a perspective in another group, and they were talking about... Uh, the the seven tribes and they mention right next to Enlil because there's seven tribes of the Anunnaki which is on Enlil, Enki, Nin, Hursag, Nana, um, Utu, and Inanna and they're also known as Elohim, um, Anunnaki giants, gods, shining ones. Well someone made a correlation or made a, a, put right next to in parentheses to Enlil that it was Jehovah Okay, Jehovah's Witness or Jehovah. And I'm like, okay, so what's going on is we have offshoots of the Judeo-Christian Islamic religion praying to one of the seven gods of the Anunnaki and saying that their word is more, their, their word is the right word. But you have seven gods that came onto this earth, seven gods. Okay, from the Anunnaki, the original seven gods that created all of mankind. And they came all on here equally with information that they bestowed upon the human race. So what would make one god uh, more correct than the other? And so that is the division of religion. Okay, that's the division of religion when you put a name to the God that you are worshiping. And, and I don't know if that person was a Jehovah's Witness that put the name Jehovah's Witness next to Enlil or Enki or well, Enlil. And I'm sure that there are other religions that have names for their icons that are attached to the original seven tribes of the Anunnaki. And so, this is why I want my Jilly Juice crowd to evolve and not speak from a very divisive platform of speaking from a, um, a narrow perspective that your God, the one of seven gods, was much better than the other gods. It's like saying that Nana God was better than the Utu God or the Inanna God was better than An or Enlil or Enki. They all had something con to contribute to the whole world. They all had um, philosophies and logic and reasoning and everything that we have right now. They've contributed that to everything that you know. Okay? They've contributed, yes, to wars and to division as well as unification. Because in order to have unification, you must have division. And so that way you can see, you know, yeah, death is division. And death means that that is a balancing force. But then you also have the, the, the choice to be unified, to coalesce. Okay? And, and so th that's why I've broken everything down or reduced it down to life or death. And we know that, that death is necessary when it needs to be balanced with life because too much life is cancer. Not enough life is death, nothing exists, and so you can't have extinction, and you can't have cancer. See, extinction is death. Cancer is too much life. How could you have too much life? Well, because you have so many rats and not enough um, food for the rats, they take over. Then the rats die, the food then starts growing again. And the rats then propagate again and get really numerous, and then they eat all the food and the population dies and the stuff grows. I mean, but will it get to that point where everything comes extinct 
and then the world gets repopulated by who and by what and and so um and so I, I so that is why I have been targeting the religions and the people who take on a specific religion whether it's Christian Catholic Jehovah's Witness Jewish Muslim you know some person is spiritual that plays with crystals and organite um, I don't care if you're bowing to a higher power and you are saying that there's a higher power and you are less than because they gave you all the knowledge they gave you all the knowledge of the world all the knowledge of the world is on the internet so there is no higher power there's no one to worship and there's no one to look down upon either and there's no one to look up to see that's the whole point of of i guess where we're going as far as this great reset and the world economic forum and klaus schwab and all of the illuminaries, I guess, if you want to call them that, the global elite that Alex Jones has been denigrating for I don't know how long. They understand this on, on some level. I haven't seen them talk about immortality. They probably don't even know about it until now I've talked about it and have, and, and, um, and have introduced the power of salt and the power of feeling symptoms and pain and understanding viruses. Uh, maybe they already know this, but... Klaus Schwab is aging. You know, this is my open letter to Klaus Schwab. Do the Jilly Juice protocol. Do the Jilly Juice mentality. So that way, once you scale down the population, because we know that's what's going on, the population is being scaled down, start infusing this thought process. Because you want a, an egalitarian society of peace and prosperity and um, unification and productivity. You must, Klaus Schwab, and all of your cohorts need to stop aging. Fauci, you need to stop aging. Bill Gates, you need to stop aging. Dr. Phil, you need to stop aging. So that way you can put out a very balanced egalitarian perspective for the new world, because that's what you're looking for is a new world. Now we understand transhumanism to give people the choice if they don't want to live indefinitely and deal with the pain of evolving that you can put implants in them and make money off them. Okay, fine. I understand that. But you know, you need to start looking the part of someone who is balanced that wants a unified, balanced world. Okay. And so this is for all the people over there like in, in, in Europe, all the global elite in Europe. And this is for you too, Alex Jones. Stop, pro stop promoting all your supplements. They're not helping people. Okay. And so you know, if you, once you stop depending on being a demigod <laughs> on Infowars, then maybe people can take you seriously, not just the conspiracy people who are afraid of everything. You know, Klaus Schwab, people can take you seriously if you stop aging and you look like you are a balanced human that can put out balanced thought processes. But maybe you have to look a certain way because you are dealing with 7 million people who are used to aging and degrading and looking a certain way and 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 you you want to perpetuate this linear beginning middle and end type of human existence and maybe in the next 20 years 30 years 40 years the JJ mentality will be recognized as the platform to work with and then you can also guide reproduction carefully and have a very specific formula for the child that is growing up who's going to be evolving so they can stay alive and definitely and not die from preventable diseases like the aging process <laughs> okay and so i don't know if this has even been considered i don't even know if this is, is being hidden and not to be brought out until later but then here's the jj mentality who is now prematurely bringing it up if I give you that much credibility that you already know this, I have no idea what the global elite know and what they don't know. But all I know is what I see today. And uh, reversing the aging process is going to be something of the future. Not just prolonging someone's life and they look like the crypt keeper, not just hooking people up to machines so they stay alive for 120 years. I'm talking about someone that looks like they're 30, but they're actually like 150, okay? 
And Klaus Schwab, you're not exemplifying that. Bill Gates, you're not exemplifying that. Dr. Phil, you're not exemplifying that. Fauci, you're not exemplifying that. Nobody in the cured media is exemplifying a balanced way of, of, um, of, of life. You're not. And maybe that is the intention. Because if you're looking to scale down, you know, 6.5 billion people, you got to have people buying into the lifespan process and getting lost in the pleasures and then taking all the remedies and the chemotherapies and then coming from a victim mentality. Oh, everybody, you know, put on the on your timeline. Everyone pray for everyone that has cancer. No, you know, you, you know, you don't want to change your life and, and feed your body and deal with the pain. You want to be all on chemotherapy and everybody feel sorry for you because you had cancer. That's kind of the mentality of the world today is victim mentality, wanting everyone to pray for people who are dealing with cancer, but will do nothing about changing their life and their lifestyle and their belief systems. They just want everyone to pray for someone who has cancer. I'm sorry, but prayers don't work. If prayers work, y'all be freaking living. You wouldn't have cancer to begin with. All right, bye.